It's time for Supply Chain Now. Broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Heard around the world, Supply Chain Now spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon, Scott Luton, and we'll hear away with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's show. So on today's show, we have got an incredible thought leader from the world of sales, marketing, and growth, real growth. And yes, believe it or not, even during these uniquely challenging times, companies are finding ways to get their message out there, to meet with the right people, and then close business. How, you ask? Well, stay tuned. You're going to learn more in this episode. Uh, For what, you know, in this episode, you should have an opportunity to increase your supply chain IQ, as always here on Supply Chain. Now, quick programming note before we get started. Um, Like all of our series, if you you enjoy what you hear today, check us out wherever you get your podcast from. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. Okay, with no further ado, joining me here today, First off, uh, my esteemed co-host, a regular contributor here at Supply Chain Now, most of our listeners will recognize him right away, Will Haraway, top-ranked St. Louis Cardinals fan, yeah, and co-founder and chief content officer at Lead Coverage. Will, how you doing? I'm doing good, besides the fact that there is no baseball and it doesn't even look like we're, we're, we're headed towards a resolution, but beyond that, great. Well, I'm with you, and we, yeah. we were talking about a li- little bit about that on the, uh, yeah. the warm-up call, and uh, we'll, have, we'll have a lot more to talk about, hopefully, in, the in our regular weeks. segments. Yes. That's right. <laughs> All right, and maybe, maybe we call that doubles and triples. I like it. Bill and Scott or something. I don't I know. Like we'll see. Um, but today, our listeners are tuned in. They're going to hear from our featured guest, Kara Brown, Chief Revenue Officer with Lead Coverage. Kara, how you doing? It's so great to be here. Thanks. Great, uh, great to have you, especially as you're on the road uh, down in Florida, which is, is, is um, man, if you get a chance to take a deep breath and, and unplug even a little bit, because I know you don't, you're not a big fan of unplugging too much, but I bet it's nice down in Florida this time of year. It is beautiful. we got a house with a private pool, so we are as COVID safe as possible in Florida, <laughs> but super nice to get away. Thanks. Well, good, good, good. Safe travels, and hopefully you and your family enjoy that. So, um, you know, before we dive into what many companies and leaders, you know, what they lose, you know, uh, sleep at night is figuring out how to crack the code on growth. Before we get there, let's get to know you a little better. You know, as we were talking about everyone, you know, here with our supply chain now audience knows Will Hairway. You know, they know that he's an incredible uh, guitarist. He, he's all about getting supply chain PR out to all the newsmakers. No, about incredible, but <laughs> I think you are. We're his biggest fans, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm a big fan. But, you know, Garrett. Get the job done. Yeah, get the job done. Get the songs out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, he co-hosts our Supply Chain City Series, which we really enjoy with Ben Harrison Chamber. But, you know, Kara, oh, um, we've been trying to get you on the show for a while. It's tough with your scheduling. I think we, I think we had to go through three of your agents to get you on. So now Maybe that we've two. got you. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've got you, let's get our, give our audience a chance to connect with you and, and learn kind of who you are first. So tell us where you're from and give us an anecdote or two about your upbringing. Yeah, sure. So Will and I have been business partners for a little bit now, but we've been working together since about 2012. So Will and I go way back. Super glad to be here. Huge fans of y'all at Supply Chain Now. So I'm from Chicago, uh, which you can probably hear in my voice. If we've ever had a cocktail together, I get real Midwest real fast. (laughs) Um, So I grew up just outside the city and did a stint in Nashville, but I'm really from Chicago. Got to Atlanta about four years ago. Never going back. Got a house and a boat. Love it. The weather is way better. Um, But yeah, had a really good sort of normal Midwestern girl upbringing in Chicago. Well, you know, I got to tell you, I've I've been to Chicago three or four times, so not often enough. One of our last trips was in October, early October. And the weather was just, it was like 62 or 65 crisp. We sat outside and had brunch. We took the L train to uh, yeah, all yeah. the cool tourist spots for and, sure you know and we just had you know three days did not do it justice we could have been there 30 days so um but atlanta does have its advantages as you point out so um, Kara, tell tell scott where you uh the the, the house that you had it, what neighborhood the house that you owned uh what what neighborhood it was in oh the river forest house 
really so, cool. yeah, oh, our first, oh, the first house yeah. I bought. So actually, this is actually relatively supply chain related. Uh, so my first big girl job was Echo Global <laughs> Logistics, right? And I was a whole 23. And I made a whole, I don't know, some number of money that was bigger than I'd ever made before. And I thought I could buy myself a house. So I did. I bought myself the coolest 700 square feet, one mile from Wrigley Field, right like in the smack dab middle of Wrigleyville with a wow. um, third floor walk up balcony. We used to have barbecues out there so you could hear the crowd from Wrigley Field from our deck. It was really cool. Oh, what an experience. And uh, I, I bet you didn't have to search too, too uh, far and wide to find a buyer as you were uh, moving down here. Actually, that's an awful story. It was terrible. <laughs> so <Sorry. laughs> it's okay. I'll be happy to share. So it, we moved out of the one bedroom condo when we had kids and stuff. And I rented it out in the city of Chicago. If the building decides they want to sell, they can, if 75% of the owners want to sell, you have to sell. So my condo was literally sold out from underneath me. Ooh. And on the phone call where I was trying to convince the rest of the owners to keep their building, someone called me young Donald Trump. Oh, and gosh. I was like, I'm not, this is like, 2000, you know, 12 or something. So it didn't mean anything then. But I was like, Oh, no, I just want to keep my condo and keep the renter in there. So long story short, great condo in my 20s, but moved out to the suburbs like any good Midwestern mom. <laughs> well, that's okay. Uh, Chicago, we still love you. And yeah. uh, as we found out on the front end, you got a bunch of all your family still there. Um, so I bet it's special to go back and, and reconnect. For sure. Um, we love it. All right. So one more, you know, um, what was, what was something, you know, growing up, especially on the outskirts of, of the, of an all American, really all world city like Chicago, what's yeah. one thing that really stood out that really was a, such a big part of your childhood that, you know, you miss. This is super random. Um, I was in Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat downtown Chicago Broadway when I was in like fifth grade. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> Broadway. Like yeah, like Fifth straight grade. I was I was yellow child number twelve. <laughs> and I got to hold a vulture during O Canaan days before Donny Osmond came out for the Elvis number, which you only know the order of Joseph if you were actually in the show, because that's sort of messed up. Uh but yeah, that was a terrific experience. And we took the bus in every day to go to, to do these shows. It's a big mm. sort of children's choir. Uh, but yeah, I was actually like a classically trained like lesbian growing up, which I do sort of miss sometimes. Yeah. Will's uh, Will's commitment to his artistic talents is something I'm definitely jealous of. <laughs> well, that, that's that's probably one of the benefits of li of living. Uh, you know, just like here in Atlanta, some, some of the cultural yeah. opportunities you have that you know, I know I didn't have growing up in Aiken, South Carolina. Yeah, um, we were super fortunate. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so let's shift gears a little bit here. And Will is, I uh, appreciate your role in keeping care honest and get, giving us the dirt as we work through here. No, nah, I'm kidding. Um, but Kara, let's talk about your professional journey. And, and, and I think in the warm-up conversation or a couple of nuggets that I really enjoyed learning more about, and we're going to talk about those. But talk to us. You, you were talking about kind of where you were with that first house purchase. Kind of walk us through just prior to lead coverage. Yeah, sure. So uh, 2006, I was actually – the one of the first 20 employees at Echo Global Logistics. And I remember I was like 24, 25, and I got the job because they were looking for someone to write some marketing copy. And I had loaded trucks as a part-time job in college. Okay. And they were like, cool, you looks like you know enough about trucks to write <laughs> for a broker. I was like, cool. Had no idea what it was. Three years later, we had grown 3,000%, and my name is actually on the IPO for Echo, so the actual IPO press release has my name on it. Wow. It was an amazing experience. Working for Doug Wagner is, or was, one of the best experiences of my life. Huge, huge fan of Doug and the team at Echo. Um, and so from there, I ended up moving to Nashville, actually, to work for what was OHL and is now Geotis. And uh, they were owned by private equity when I joined them. So we were going to do an IPO and sort of do that all over again. Long story short, it didn't happen. And so I turned to my husband and I was like, 
what do you want to do next? We were living in Nashville. And he's like, I don't know, let's make some babies. I was like, excellent timing. So <laughs> moved back to Chicago, popped out two kids, bam, bam, right? Because if you're going to do it, do it fast. And uh, found myself in my house, in my pajamas, with two kids under two, totally miserable, just mm. like really hating life. But what had come out of the 600 West sort of echo group on inner workings community that I've been a part of early in my career was this, uh, this community of amazing people, these entrepreneurs. And so I could list off a dozen of them that have gone on to do really cool things. So I started just sending emails for some of them, um, sort of target pin money as a mom in her house in her pajamas with two babies. And it turned into a real business <laughs> all of a sudden overnight. And that's actually when I met Will. So yeah, we were that's when we connected. Yeah, yeah. So I was in Chicago uh, working for Cargo Chief. And I remember Will and I got on the phone for the first time and it was like, mm, you know, you'd like do that dance. Like, am I <laughs> nice. going to like this guy? He's Southern. <laughs> He's doing PR. Like what is happening? This little oh, startup. and he plays the band. Yeah. I was like, he thinks he's a rock star. What's with the hair? Like, I just wasn't like, was not sure what was happening. Uh, and we ended up like first phone call. It was like magic. Awesome. We totally got each other. And, it, and we also got where each other's strengths slide like mm, immediately yeah. and that was a great experience and then when i moved to atlanta uh, well, hang, I hang on, for, so hang on one yeah, second yeah. here because uh i want to get will's take yeah on that first time y'all connected <laughs> will what did you pick up on that was appealing? Well, it's funny it's funny because you know when you are the pr firm and uh you know you get the call and you say you know we we brought in uh, a lead generation expert and they're going to work with you when you if you've done pr long enough then that can sort of be a warning call you know what i mean and you're just like uh -oh, turf war about to happen you know yeah, what i mean for sure. and i think we initially connected over emails and kara if you can't tell is very direct and was very direct in her emails just like she kind of fires it off and i kind of you know like you are you and i are very similar to scott we kind of be, we take the long way around. You can say it, Will. You can say it. we're Southern. <laughs> right, exactly. So, Passive aggressive. So, you know, so I was, like she said, we were both sort of like, I don't know how this is going to go. But then as soon as we got on the phone and spoke and, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, so, so much to be said about personal interaction and face to face. I mean, we just clicked immediately as far as uh, how we felt that uh, that PR and lead generation worked hand in hand. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 Cargo Chief was sort of one of the first of these, uh, you know, the, the digital freight brokers that are now pretty ubiquitous uh, around the supply chain world. But but when they first came on the scene, it was like, what is this? And so we, in a in a lot of ways, got to do, help define that, which was which was really really fun, and you know, yep. uh, and hit off on a relationship that you know obviously has. Uh, progressed Lord. today yeah. yeah and and care you so that was back what was that rough time frame that you and well 15 i think was when they're 13, all, that yeah all. 13 15 yeah. and so care then you were going to kind of talk about your move into atlanta i believe sorry no you're great so yeah i ended up moving to atlanta for a full-time job where i also hired will and got to work yeah. him, which was great um not directly related to transportation but sort of similar and then when that ended sort of like what do you do next Right. So had a couple of offers, fell in love with Atlanta. Um, you fell in love with the that weather, Scott. It did. The weather is amazing. I remember actually my first spring in Atlanta. I'll never forget. It was like February 27th or some date in the early spring. And I remember looking up from whatever I was doing and it was sunny outside. And I was like, oh, it's sunny because it's gray until like May in Chicago. And so I realized how much I really love the weather. Uh, and then our kids got into an incredible school and we got a boat and I'm like, I'm never leaving. This is amazing. This is the great, it's like utopia for someone like me. Um, and then the other thing that really got me about Atlanta was the female entrepreneurship community. Um, and it's just been an incredible experience to be a woman in this particular environment um, and have doors open for me like they wouldn't have in Chicago. Yep. All right. So, um, we're going to talk more about lead coverage in a minute, but let's stick with this, this, this passion uh, of, of yours and, and really what 
what was part of this eureka moment. So, so to, let's, let's do the eureka moment first. What, what really got, caught your attention? Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the work you do extracurricular. Yeah. So about the time that I started um, the business here in Atlanta, I started just to meet people, as many people as I could, right? So I asked Will for his list. I would ask anyone I would meet, who are three other people that I should get to know? And people were just amazing and willing to introduce me to folks. So I got introduced to an organization called the Entrepreneur Organization. And then I also got <laughs> essentially introduced to Bernie Dixon, who runs Launchpad 2X at the same time. Um, and we also started to learn about WE, which is the Women's Entrepreneurship Initiative that is actually funded by the city of Atlanta. Mm. At the exact same time, I read the statistic that less than 1.7% of female founders will ever break a million dollars in revenue. Wow. And I was sort of flabbergasted and disgusted and sad all at the same time. And also it was like, cool, hold my beer. Here we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> right. <laughs> just sort of put the, put the network to work and, and met some really incredible people in Atlanta who said, hey, listen, don't go back to Chicago, stay here in Atlanta. We need top talent and we need uh, whatever you need, I'll help you find it. Mm -hmm. And so our second, probably 500K in business, like from that 500K to million dollar mark, was really folks that were willing to take a risk and uh, make a recommendation or hire us um, be, because it was really tough as a female founder. Mm -hmm. So after about the first year, I finally wised up and realized that Will and I had been working together as yep. a team for at least a year, but yep. my drive to hit the million dollars as a female founded business owner was really important to me. So it was almost like day 366. I called Will and I was like, all right, I did it. I did the thing. Okay. Yeah. I got, the, can, can we do it together now? Like, can we yeah, make this yeah. official? And Will was like, I've been waiting for you to yeah. do this. So yes. Well, um, so kidding aside, and and and, and uh, the uh, euphoric moment you just shared there, that one point seven percent that's a problem, right? Yeah. And and so before we talk about lead coverage, just give us you spend a lot of time in this area mentoring and giving your time and and and, and giving it forward as we as Greg really likes to say here. What's uh, the the chief activity or two that you you spend the most time in really supporting your fellow? Uh, female entre entrepreneurship uh, community? Sure. So number one is the entrepreneur organization. Um, it's a global network of entrepreneurs and the Atlanta chapter has 21% uh, women in it, which is sort of unheard of mm. um, in the United States, which is really great. So I'm super active in EO. And then the Launchpad 2X community is terrific. So the 1.7 number exists for, it's an American Express research that's done every year. Um, but the Launchpad 2X community, women that graduate from Bernie Dixon's three-day boot camp have a 25% chance of breaking a million dollars in revenue. Okay. So I have invested a lot of time and energy in the Launchpad 2X community because they're the best bet, right? <laughs> if you can get into Launchpad, you have literally a 24% better chance of breaking a million bucks in revenue, which yep. feels like such a low number, right? right? It just, it feels like almost nothing in the grand scheme of things, but breaking through that first barrier for most women is really, really hard yeah. um, for a litany of reasons, a lot of which are internal. And so helping other women see that it's possible um, and see that you can charge what you're worth and that people can take you seriously um, and that you can have it all. I mean, I have two yeah. kids, right? Like you physically can do it. Um, it's been a big, a big um, sort of motivator for me. Yeah. Love that. And we got a lot and more. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, Scott, one of the, I really enjoyed at the, the uh, Atlanta Supply Chain Awards being able to introduce Kara to friend of the show. And, uh, you know, this is certainly a topic that we've talked to her quite a bit, Elba Perea Gallagher. Yes. You know, and her organization. I was, I was, I'd wanted to get those two together. So that was one of my favorite parts of the, of the show, because that is obviously a cause and an organization that is uh, near and dear to her heart as well. Agreed. Showme50.org is Elba's group. She, uh, Elba received a, a, a leadership innovation award um, at this, at just a few months back before the world changed. And uh, uh, Kara and Elba, that would be a, that'd be like uh, a power duo uh, that could really drive that 1.7% number, which needs to change. Okay. 
So let's talk about lead coverage. And then let's talk about some of the things you're seeing that our listeners as they're trying to crack the code, whether they're, they're doing well and they're looking for new ideas and, and other best practices, or like many companies, unfortunately, they're struggling for, for a variety of reasons. So lead coverage first. Um, tell us what the organization does. And if, if both of y'all would, and LaCara in particular, you, where you spend your time. Sure. So we are hyper-specific to business to business, lead generation and conversion. And so really lead gen is three things, sharing good news, tracking who notices it and following up. Mm. It's not hard, right? It's not like my husband is an actual rocket scientist. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and fitness model, just throw yeah. that out there. But like we're it's not rocket science. We all know it. Like you inherently know what to do. But I think as executives and busy people, right? Sometimes business development can just fall at the bottom of the list. Or yeah. it's something that you can say, oh, you know, John the biz dev guy, that's his job, right? Or pass it off to your VP of sales and make it his problem. Um, but at the end of the day, it's leadership that's going to make it work. Um, and it's just sharing good news, tracking who is interested in your good news, and following up with those individuals. And yep. that's what we do all day, every day. Uh, uh, highly leveraging technology. Wow. I think when, when you said it's those three things, uh, that as we all know here, those are long held proven tenants, right? Proven yeah. activities. Right. However, in this day and age, to your point, Kara, when, when the average business leader or entrepreneur or just a member of the team, they're going in a thousand different directions, driving revenue and driving sales, it unfortunately does get lost. As weird as it sounds, it gets lost in shuffle. Y'all are really, as I, as I was learning more about lead coverage, y'all really heavily leverage technology to do those three things, but doing it in an advanced 21st century way. Yeah, for sure. So the average marketing technology stack or MarTech stack is 17 pieces deep. So that means the average business to business marketer, whether it's a CMO at a you know big company that's doing lots of retail work or a teeny tiny broker, they are using lots and lots of tech. Mm. And it's really hard, right? A lot of these folks aren't trained in technology. How do you know if your unbounced page is going to work with your you know, HubSpot CRM that's connected to a MailChimp account, right? right? Your downloading list, your uploading list. Can I actually email this person? Why is my, all my email going to spam? Who's mm. going to call this? For? Like, there's just so much detail that goes into managing a really well thought out lead generation and then a conversion campaign. And so we, Will and I together is sort of the perfect duo for this. So Will finds the news that's super, super important and puts it where it's supposed to go. And then our team of lead gen engineers take that news and turn it into actual leads, mm. which is really special. Cause like Will said earlier, a lot of PR marketing teams sort of are separated. And, and, then, and then you talk about analyst relations. So analyst relations is even further away, right? Mm. From the marketing team who should be listening to customers and listening to what they are asking for. Right. Um, and so the, the dynamic duo of the two sort of PR plus the lead gen or the marketing slash sale is really important. It's the name, Scott, lead. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe when that domain was available. I was like, stop it. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, and going back to the analyst thing, uh, you know, there's armies and armies of analysts and, and there will be mon many more to come across global supply chain and be able to have a solution there and be able to talk that language, I think is so important, whether you're in the growth business, like, like lead coverages or a multitude of other uh, avenues. All right. So um, you kind of talked about what the company does. You, you've kind of foreshadowed where each of you play except you will I, I i have a sense of where you spend your time but care where you know day in and day out i know you probably probably wear a bunch of hats but but you know where do you spend the bulk of your time or flip uh flip the question a bit what's your favorite activity that you do uh -huh. yeah. well that's different where i spend my time and what i want to do are two different things uh, <laughs> so where i spend my time today is really on helping our clients understand 
how PR can become lead generation, right? And so how those two things are actually aligned and that sales and marketing should be one team. One of our biggest issues we have with almost all of our clients is, and we actually hear it sometimes from clients on the phone and it makes my skin crawl. Um, well, that's a marketing activity yep. versus that's a sales activity or that's a PR activity. And I want to just stop, shout from the rooftops, like, everybody wants revenue. <laughs> like, we all want the same thing. Right. Why are we segmenting by these like titles essentially, or these, these, you know, operational roles. Um, so I spent a lot of my time coaching clients through that, helping them understand there are six lead gen strategies that we really uncovered. Um, some of them don't work right now, like in-person meetings, trade shows, right? Thing of the past. But we are seeing outrageous success with things like webinars. Um, and also, I think like right now is supply chain's moment. I mean, this is the moment. If you have something that can help in any way, shape, or form, this is the moment. We have a client that does AI robots in warehouses. And the idea that there are retailers that are going to take retail locations and turn them into dark stores and make sure that folks are staying six feet apart and then reducing FTEs in the warehouse. Like one of the things we've been thinking a lot about at Lee Coverage for all of our clients is if you don't have a board, what would they be asking for? Mm. And if you do have a board, like what are your customers' boards asking them for? Yep. And they are asking them for plans for 2021 and 2022. How is this going to change? Where are the warehouses going to be? How far away are things going to be from the end consumer? I mean, everything right. is going to change. And the boards are asking for these plans. You know, uh, the, the automation example y'all use since you, you work in that space, uh, just the other day, we talked about it on the supply chain buzz. Uh, the automation market, the global warehouse automation market, will almost double. It was 14 billion in 2019. Right. It's going to be over 27 billion by 2025, according to Frost and Sullivan uh, via modern materials handling. Someone's going to get that business. And if you're not yeah. putting your best foot forward in a smart and savvy way with people that know how to do it, you know, you're going to be left out with either a sliver or none at all. So now's the time to get smart about amplifying and, and, and uh, generating leads and, uh, and, and following up to get the conversations, ultimately get the close that, that, that you need, right? Yeah. And, and Scott, that was your conversation with Jeff Cashman and Gray Orange, right? Is that what you're, you, so, so Gray Orange is a, is a lead coverage client, uh, proud to say. Yep. And you're a great example about what we're talking about. That, that, that actually is, uh, the, you know, one of the, the some of the last business we closed before the, the, uh, the, 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 this whole thing started when we were yeah. all last together at the Atlanta Supply Chain Awards. But they're a great example because of the AI and the, and the robots in the warehouse. I mean, the, as Kara said, it's supply chain's moment because not only is that making your, uh, you know, not only is it making your warehouse more efficient, you know, but it, it's also making it safer. It's, it, it complements with the, uh, you know, with the, the, with humans, you know, it's not taking their jobs away. As Jeff said on your show, you know, it, it's complimenting them. It's making them safer. And if, if, if you were on the fence, let's say you're just a retailer with, you know, eight to 10 distribution centers all over the country. And if you were on the fence about making that decision, you're making that decision now. Yep. Right. You have a choice. Yep. And gray orange is another example of a company that's making an investment in sales and marketing right now. Mm. Right. The yeah. reason we're talking about them on this webinar today is because they're actively making an investment. Yeah. And I think, I can't tell you, I talked to another, you know, Fortune 2000 player in the space and they're just not making investments in sales and marketing right now. Or they have bloated sales teams that have been, you know, sort of with them for a long time and they're, re they're rewarding essentially that loyalty, which I totally appreciate as an owner. But I think, you know, if you're sitting on a team of six to 10 guys who used to close deals with handshakes over bars at trade shows, gotta find that something time new. is, that is over. Yeah. Right. Like it is, it is long gone. And those are the clients of ours that are putting digital, digital lead gen, not just digital marketing, but digital lead gen to use are putting deals in the pipeline yep. right now. 
All right. So this is a good segue here because one of the big points you just, you and we both just made there is first off, you, these organizations that are cracking the code, they're choosing intentionally to invest in sales and marketing right now and lead generation and, and message amplification. So let's, um, let's follow it up and go broadly here. So when, when we look at trends or best practices or you know, some of your observations in that sales and marketing space with a little bend towards the global supply chain community, um, what key developments do you see? And you know, what are some of the more successful companies doing to grow during this, this, this crazy year of 2020? I'll tell you, Scott, it is not rocket science. Again, super simple. <laughs> Pick up the phone. Love it. Love it. It's amazing what yeah. happens. Everyone's sitting at home. Everyone's at home. Maybe less people than there were 12 weeks ago, but everyone has been at home. So we have a partnership with a company called Connect and Sell. It's a really sexy weapon. We call it a weapon. It's like a, it's like a little secret, secret I'm giving here. A little secret weapon for your team here. Um, but we like to use this tool, Connect and Sell. It can help our um, cold callers or warm callers, whatever you want to call them, our SDRs, bang through about 130 dials a minute, which is amazing. They just bang through these phone numbers and then they talk to the people that they get in touch with, obviously. Um, but being able to make those calls, so having lists ready, understanding that you're no longer going to be able to close deals over a handshake at a trade show and you have to get in front of people. And our clients that are being really successful in that right now are folks that are willing to pick up the phone. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That's really it. It's not complicated. And if you don't want to pick it up yourself, like if your senior sales guy is like, oh, I haven't done cold calling since I was 22 or whatever, that's fine. We have people that will call them for you. Can I tell you a funny story? <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> about 12 weeks ago when we all went home, my brother called. And he was like, hey, big sister, I just got laid off. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised, little brother. You sold fancy chin implants. I can't imagine. He's like, all right, don't be a jerk. <laughs> Sibling rivalry, right? right? He's like, don't be a jerk. Just give me something to do, right? And I was like, do you want to make some calls? He's like, yeah, I'll, just, I'll make calls. Awesome. So we put him on the phone. And we have now hired 26 laid off sales reps wow. to dial for our clients. And what's amazing, Scott, is that these are not 22-year-olds we have to tie to a chair. My brother is in his mid-30s. He's super successful selling fancy chin implants, but still knows how to get in the door, knows how to undercover, you know, the objections, handling, getting in front of the champion, et cetera. Mm. And he is really setting like real meetings. Actually, I think he closed the deal yep. um, for clients in all types of industries, but supply chain specifically. All right. So um, backing up for a second. So our listeners, if you heard there, um, not only doing the activity and whatever that is in your space on your sales teams, but really knocking it out day in, day out, but backing up is having the right targeted data so that you're not just out there blind from eight to five or whatever those right. hours are. You got to give that to your team. Um, so hiring, you know, this is fascinating because I, I didn't realize this was not on my homework. Uh, my due diligence, <laughs> 26 people, which is exciting that, I mean, you know, clearly you are growing left and right. So 26 people you hired, I'd love to know, and I bet our listeners would love to know just one lesson learned uh, from hiring sales talent, because I can tell you, having been there and done that, there's all these assumptions that are out there and half of them are, if not all of them are wrong. I mean, what'd you learn from, from successfully onboarding all these folks? Can I give you another secret? You ready Please. for this one? All right. <laughs> there is a new, really cool tool out there called Crystal Nose. Okay. D R Y S T A L knows like crystal ball. Yep. And it can automatically give you the personality profile of anyone that you're linked to on LinkedIn. Okay. And you want to hire folks that have drive, ambition, and don't want to spend a lot of time sort of architecting the perfect solution. Mm. Right. Um, and so that's one of the things we've done. We've just run every new rep that we've hired through the tr crystal nose sort of personality profile and figured out, are they really going to sell? Are they no. really going to close? The other thing that's I've been talking a lot about this actually in my sort of circles is I think there's a law of diminishing returns. Mm. So we are not obtuse to the fact that COVID has given us a very unique opportunity to hire sales reps that have been trained by some of the best trained, you know, sales folks in 
the, the essentially in the country. Yeah. So if we can pick up someone who is trained by, you know, the sales loft team or the full story team, we get the benefit of their training, right? And so these folks aren't, um, they're not working full time. We don't have any expectation that this is going to be sort of their full time job forever, right. but it's a win, win, win for everyone, right? Yep. Our client gets a really solid trained sales rep calling on their behalf. The rep is making some money while they're unemployed and we get to make the clients happy and help them close deals. And you know, uh, it, it's going to sound so cliche, but I'm going to say it because clearly you're, you're putting it into practice, getting creative and finding those creative, innovative win-win-wins in this day and age. You know, look, this isn't a perfect environment for too many people, except for certain product manufacturers and sellers. It's challenging for a lot of folks. So getting creative, stepping out of how you've done business, it doesn't matter for 60 years or 16 years and finding these creative ways of, of, of uh, winning together and growing together. So I love this story. Hey, Will, um, what yeah. would you, um, as, we, as we continue to kind of this little segment here about what your team is seeing uh, successful companies do to drive growth during this challenging year, what else would you add to what Kara has uh, shared? Well, you know, uh, thought leadership, certainly, you know, taking a, take a look at what is going on in your particular industry and take a stance on it. You know, um, that, that's something that we've been really successful with. Um, well, we, it's, it's generally part of any, any program that we put together, but, uh, but, but I would say that's, that's something that's really working for a lot of, especially on, on the supply chain side, people yeah. are trying to figure out exactly how to, you know, kind of, you know, uh, do more with less for what, you know, and then, uh, for, for one, and, and certainly, uh, trying to understand some of the, the challenges that are out there that have been created by the, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the demand has changed as right. far as dramatically, the, dramatically, you know, how you're managing your inventory, you know, how you can forecast ahead, how to look ahead at disruptions, how to handle those disruptions when they can, you know, obviously when they continue to come. I mean, this thing isn't over by a long shot. And we all know. Right. So, uh, so being able to, 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 to give that kind of advice, um, you know, and, and we like to help our clients do that. And then, uh, and spreading that around your industry, getting as far as you can, that, that can, that can certainly, develop into, uh, you know, that, that can give you opportunities. Yeah. And we're definitely seeing it with our clients. And that, that's it, it's more tough. Now I would say over the last three months than it was the previous three months. That's something. Yeah. And you know, it, it's very difficult to project the, the accurate brand that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you want to in, in this wide uh, ever growing universe of, of your digital brand, social channels, PR releases, everything else, a news cycle for that matter. So I can, I can certainly appreciate and it's I our tough. listeners can. And I, I know Kara is going to agree with me here because this is something that we talk a lot about. Just, just, just your tone. You know, we all understand what is going on, right? So uh, nobody wants to, um, you know, uh, go over the top as far as, you know, uh, people are being a little, you know, uh, they're holding back a little bit. Um, when at, at the same time, like, like Kara said, this is, if, if you're a supply chain company, this really is your moment to help, you know, and if you look at it in that respect, you know, if you are, you know, providing, uh, technology solutions that are enabling drivers to be able to do touchless payments, for instance, you know, yep. or if you are, you know, helping, if you have a, a transportation management system that is, that is, uh, you know, that is separating out you know, uh, com checks and all the different things yeah. that covers and, you know, and, and it's making well, people safer is yeah. it is enabling uh, transactions to happen faster in a, in a time when a lot of systems are having a hard time connecting and talking to each other. Um, this I is a good time about that because that's helping. That's, that's helping the situation. Yeah. And, and I, I think even well, like what's coming next. Right. Right. So if you have a solution that will help someone fix a problem that is coming in 2021, like a relapse of COVID and everyone going back home again. Yeah. Um, like, you know, distributed warehousing, where am I going to put all this stuff that's coming from China because I haven't moved any, any um, material out of my retail stores. Like if you have a solution for a problem that is here today or a problem that's coming, yeah. 
this is the time to talk about it and tell everyone. I think mm. one of the things that we see a lot, Will, is especially right now, clients are being like, oh, we don't want to talk about that until it's actually ready. Or we don't want to talk about that yet. Right. And Will and I are on the other end of the phone, like, <laughs> why not? Like, now is the time, right. right? Like, this is your moment. The supply chain has never had a moment like this before. And I don't, I mean, so much of what our clients do, and I'll put yeah. myself in the same sort of realm as everyone else, because we're all sort of professionals in this space. So much of what we do is going to change. Yeah. And the analysts are looking for it. The reporters are looking for it. And the customer, our customers, the shippers are looking for it. They're looking yeah. for who's got the next solution that can help me save my job. Sure. Right. Because yeah. Everyone's on the line. Or spot that the next curveball that's around the corner yes. that no one sees yet. I mean, that's, right. that's really where we're headed. So on that note, let's get, um, Beyond sales and marketing, which clearly uh, you are doing a lot of work in and, and you've got a lot of observations. I think what you shared already can, can, can uh, help folks continue to crack the code. And, you know, there's no finish line. You know, things constantly change, even though uh, some of the uh, proven best practices, there are different spins on different ways you, you get it done. Let, let's go broader though. Let's, let's look at, you know, you, at, Kara, as you started to paint the picture, because I, I agree with you. This is supply chain's time in many ways. It has been cut for a few years in terms of having a seat at the table and, and being able to be in position to shine. Now, I think the burden and the responsibility changes a bit because I, I believe that the global supply chain industry is going to break through some of the challenges that aren't as supply chain related, but that's a different show. Let's, let's, talk, about what, uh, let, let's talk about what trends or issues kind of outside the sales and marketing realm that you're tracking more than others as you look at the rest of 2020 and beyond? It's going to sound really cliche and not a surprise to your audience, but technology. Um, technology, how technology works together, how the ERPs and the TMSs are going to be working together in the future, um, all the way down to actual location-specific tracking, right? Mm. Companies like Locator X, I think you've had Steve on the show, um, that are really paving the way forward yep. in terms of where are, where are all my products? <laughs> Not just where is my, where is my shipment or where is my TEU or where is my pallet, but where are every single one of my products and yep. being able to prove to the end consumer that what they are buying is legitimate. Um, I think I saw just in the news yesterday that Zara is $3 billion in e-commerce. Wow. I think we are going to be seeing a massive change in all things contract, LTL and OTR and ocean. I mean, every, every single mode, right? The global supply chain is going to be dramatically changed by COVID and the investments that the leaders are going to make. So if you're going to be a leader in this space, investing in the products that will help your customers and then also investing in making sure your customers know about it right. is going to be super important. You can no. spend a lot of time and money building a really beautiful product. But if you don't tell anybody it exists, no one's going to ever see it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, it's interesting you men mentioned Locator X because Steve was on the show uh, a month or so ago. And what I love, two things come to mind from that show. Number one is that they've got this, this very progressive forward-looking technology and they have found a way to help in the pandemic with the, the, um, the uh, not the respirators, the ventilators, right? Yeah. Um, that is, that is, awesome that is, those are hero stories yeah. and then secondly mom my mom was watching that episode she retired as an rn after 30 years a few years back i didn't it, for me it was, a, it was a blind spot i've never worked ever in a hospital or a doctor's office and she talked about how the equipment is getting lost all the time yes and it was so uh, glad to hear that yes <laughs> so thanks I mean, mom. i'm not glad that their equipment's getting lost but right yeah. but what i but i, I hear now I took it like, just like you said, it's like hammer meat nail, you know, when we need it. And so that, that was a really cool moment from that show. But um, there's so much. Uh, Will, I mean, same question to you. Uh, Kara kind of shared a little bit about what she's yeah. tracking kind of outside of sales and marketing. Of course, no shortage of, of news and innovation in the, in the technology front. What sticks out in your mind? I mean, it, honestly, it's, it's, it's sort of how the, how the supply chains are going to continue to adjust 
uh, not to go back, I mean, we, we spoke about it a minute ago, but just how demand is con going to continue to shift. And it's going to be, um, it's going to be the, 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 the supply chain solutions and the people that have invested in those solutions that are, you know, in, in demand forecasting, in, uh, you know, in projection, um, in op inventory optimization. I mean, just to try and figure out exactly where we are moving forward. I think that's, that's something that I'm intensely focused on, honestly, uh, because, um, you know, inventory carry, in inventory cost is generally the biggest expense on a, on, on a line item for a business, you know, certainly for a retailer. Yeah. So, uh, so, so the, the, the companies that can help crack that code, um, you know, they, they've certainly always been important, but I think never more important than now because, um, you know, everybody's at home, they're doing their shopping online. It's very hard to determine, you know, what is, I mean, the, the you know, the holiday season's not too far away, you know, right. but it's like, when is the, when is it going to start to, 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 spike, you know, is it going to spike, you know, uh, you, you would assume so, but, but what's it going to look like in an environment that has literally never happened, you know? Um, I mean, I guess it happened a hundred years ago, but, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, world's changed a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Sort of like going to the store, which I guess they didn't do back then because <laughs> You know what I'm saying. But I think yeah. what one of the things that we're seeing, Will, is that people are hungry for this information. Yeah. So we hosted a webinar for a client and it was on their very specific expertise and what they do. It wasn't sort of like a how supply, how is global supply chain gonna change? Because it's right. so obtuse. It's a very specific, like this is how we think it's we are going to be impacted and this is how we can help. We had almost 160 people yeah. register for this webinar. And in a B2B environment, those are big numbers. Yeah. And so, you know, real meeting set from that webinar talking about how they can help with what's coming, right? Yeah. With the expectations that the board is putting on them for what's coming in 2021 and 2022. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing we're watching is what are the shippers and the retailers, what are they paying attention to, right? What are they visiting? What are they watching? Um, and that's all PR. Yep. Okay. Uh, as we start to wrap up here, I want to surprise y'all with a question. Because All right. We've covered, <laughs> we've covered so much ground, both in sales and marketing leadership and, and around it. Cause you know, a lot of things are connected to, of course, to growth, right? Revenue. Um, so we're going to ask you to make sure our listeners know how to get in touch with lead coverage in a minute. But if there's one thing that's come up in this past hour or so that business leaders, supply chain leaders, even supply chain professionals need to have on their radar. What would that one thing be? And Kara, I'll start with you. Yeah. So my area of expertise is lead gen sales and conversion, right? Marketing and conversion. So I'm going to stay in my lane. Yep. So the one thing that I would have my clients look out for is is not having the rest of the organization change with the supply chain or the, or the operation of the org, right? Mm -hmm. So if your supply chain is changing dramatically, if, you're, if, you're, if your network, if your distribution models are changing dramatically, your sales and marketing isn't far behind. Mm -hmm. And I know they feel really disconnected, especially at the big company level. They feel yep. really different, but they're, really connected like they're all they're all together because if your customers are changing their demands that's a marketing problem yep and if you don't fill in the team right from this is what's happening in the supply chain space and you don't fill in the marketing team to fill in the sales team on the changes they're seeing in the operational level you're going to miss out on an opportunity to potentially close real business in a time of need that's a great point uh, you know, I was, I was part of a, a big international event uh, this week and trying to digest a ton of content. Holy cow, it's like a circus, but good stuff, right? All about uh, supply chain and technology and retail. And one of the things that one of the biggest points a lot of folks rallied around today, Kara, is kind of follows your, your, your point there, is that don't, basically, especially in this day and age, don't bring products to your customer and to your prospects. Bring solutions or yeah. ideas or 
you know, um, a path forward, right? right? Even if you don't have that perfect, you know, uh, uh, magic wand packaged up with a bow on top and here you go. You know, that, that was a very savvy point and, and I think a very timely point that was made and it, it kind of falls in parallel with what you just shared there, Kara. Yeah, and then share the solutions that you are coming up with with your clients. Make sure the entire organization, including your sales and marketing teams, know what those solutions are. Yeah. Because if you create one solution for, let's call it Gap, someone else, someone needs to go tell Nordstrom that you created the solution, right? Like those, you, know, you have the marketing team, the sales and marketing team needs to have the examples at their fingertips to be able to share your wins. That's like your life I think blood. a lot of times, yeah, and I think a lot of times that it doesn't, it just doesn't make it all the way across the organization for whatever reason, right? right. And sales and marketing end up sort of spinning their wheels right. using the same language they've been using without knowing that there's more to be had if the operations team would just sort of share it. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, that's old, it's old school culture. It's, you know, it's corporate silos and there's nothing wrong with that. We're all used to it. But if you're really going to be successful post COVID, I think it's, it's going to be the sort of internal, um, the internal knowledge share is going to be super important. Yep. Well, uh, and Will, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pivot over to you. That seems yeah. like it's a, a term of the day here lately. Um, Kara, what, what I heard there as she finished up her her thoughts is that if if the information's dated and if it's stale, that impacts something that you feel strongly about, and that's the tone. Right. The tone could be accurate and dead on for first part of 2019, but that's not where we are. And you know, if we're not equipping, you know, if we're not, if the tip of the spear is not, if the tip of the spear is tone deaf, then you can do a lot more damage than hit the mark, right? That's right. And, and, and you know, as as Kara was saying there, you know, it's important to really mine your organization for all kinds of things, and 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 just this now is not really the time to be shy, and you know, uh, and, and and as long as you maintain the right sort of helpful, um, you know, service tone uh, with, and, you know, uh, Locator X is a, is a great example of a company that, you know, what they do, their mission is to help you track the most important things in your life. Like that's their focus, that's their mission. So if you go through your organization and you, you know, it, it could be a partnership, it could be, you know, a, 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 certainly a new customer, but but an adjustment to, your an adjustment to the product that you might not think is a major adjustment, but if you'll just mention it to the rest of the organization, then uh, you know all of a sudden you can track uh, ventilators. You know what I mean? You didn't know you, that the, that the product had that capability, and all of a sudden you know that's that's something that sparks an idea that helps you know that that, that, that helps create some different some different things within your solutions. That, that's one thing. Don't be shy and, and and look within your organization, kind of establish yourself with a deep bench. You know, don't always rely from a marketing perspective on your, on your CEO, you know, uh, uh, and on your, you know, your, your chief innovation officer or your chief product officer or whatever, you know, look within your organization that you, you hired these guys for a reason, uh, find more thought leaders. It's better to have more than, you know, to have a super deep bench. Right. You know, look at your board. They're on your board for a reason. You know, uh, they're successful business people. You know, they can they can help you with certainly with 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 marketing, with public relations, and thought leadership. And and really, it's it's just a matter of getting everybody maybe not on the same room right now, but in the same Zoom call or or, or just in the same email train and 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 just to kind of pick some brains. Yeah. You know? yep. Use the whole organization and don't silo up. Well put, well put. All right, so the, the, the trading dollar question here is how can our listeners get in touch with both of you? And, and Carrie, you lead off. Sure, it's really easy. We're at leadcoverage.com, uh, like it sounds, leadcoverage.com. <laughs> we didn't lose any vowels or anything when we bought the domain. Uh, and I'm Kara at, at leadcoverage.com and Will is Will at leadcoverage.com, K-A-R-A. Not hard. Easy, yeah. Easy um, but yeah, we're easy to get in touch with. We're happy to have any chat. We love talking about trucks, uh, planes and boats and yeah. all things supply chain. I think one of the things that always gets me is when we get on the phone with someone, usually a man, 
uh, and I do most of our sort of intro <laughs> connections, right? Like I get most intro calls and we start chatting and we start talking about stuff and he's like, oh, like you actually like, you like know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I do, sir. sir. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's really know, fun. Uh, so I stole this. I think I, I saw something you shared on LinkedIn or, or some, some, one of the social media channels. And, uh, I think someone, I think you, you said that, Hey, someone told me that I needed a filter a long time ago yes. oh and my you gosh, didn't yes. <laughs> you need, just need to start your business. That's right. Right. And be the CEO and be, and be That's the, right. be the leader, you know, that, that folks. And, and, um, yeah, I don't have the perfect words to tie that back to all the good work you do to support the female entrepreneur community, but Thanks. there is a, there is a nugget of truth there. And it, it, what, what I, instantly think of is the meetings that go on. You know, Elba has, has told us a lot about some of the meetings that go on and there's only one female in the room or there's just a lack of diversity in the room. And then even, and then the conversation doesn't even involve everybody. And, and there's so, there's so much frustration, so much work to be done there. And Kara, you're, you can be an example now, now that you've cracked that 1%, 1.7%. You know, that folks will, will get inspiration from. That's really important. You know, I appreciate that. Folks Thank you. Need to see it, to be it. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, well, by the way, in that is math. That's right. It's armed with math. That's all the math. <laughs> we bring so much math, Scott. But oh. one of the things I learned is never let your client walk into another board meeting or executive leadership meeting with no math. <laughs> So we arm our clients for whatever meeting they're going to yep. with all of their lead gen math. Super all the important. math. And that's M-A-F-F, -F, right? All the math, right? <laughs> the math yes. and the PR. That is definitely the PR guys like us. Yes, it's all the math. Yeah. All <laughs> well, right. Well, those are the words. We do the math. Well, we'll have to have y'all back. Uh, really enjoyed today's conversation. You know, we don't talk enough about the, the, the sales and marketing side, which is an important, hugely important side for any business, any industry, but certainly supply chain. So we'll have to continue the conversation. We have been featuring Kara Brown, Chief Revenue Officer with Lead Coverage and her partner, co-founder and Chief Content Officer, Will Hareway, also a regular contributor here at Supply Chain Now. All right, so audience, hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Um, I'm partial, at least with Will, but, but Kara, your first time here, you <laughs> stood and delivered just like we knew you would. That's right. Thanks so so much. folks will be clamoring for the second, the follow-up installment. Hey, to our audience, real quick, we've got a couple of speaking webinars. We've got a June 25th webinar with our friends over at Rootstock, uh, all about ERP in the new normal. And we're going to be learning some best practices there. And uh, a special event that we're leading uh, and facilitating July 15th, where we're going to have a, our next stand up and sound off on race and industry. And we're going to have a very frank 90 minute conversation globally with a panel and getting your thoughts and questions and observations and frustrations and you name it. Uh, July 15th, you can sign up for either one of those. No charge, supplychainradio.com. On that note, be sure to check us out uh, there for podcasts, live streams, great conversations like this with uh, thought leaders across global and in supply chain. And with all that said, uh, we want to challenge as we, as we try to do regularly and we challenge ourselves here, do good, give forward and be the change. And on that note, We'll see you next time here on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody.